What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Dad Dad's Videos. It is in the middle of January here in the Midwest and typically around this time is when we experience our coldest temperatures of the winter. Right now it's actually four degrees outside. So when you start to get temperatures like that, you start to hear about people's pipes in their house freezing and then potentially bursting. I wanted to share with you the tips, the tricks that I use to prevent that within our house and then what to do if your pipes do freeze and what to do if they happen to burst. First tip, leave your cabinet doors open where there are pipes and plumbing. So right here we have the cabinets underneath the kitchen faucet. You want to make sure the warmer air from your house gets into the space around your pipes. So it's important to do this here. It's important to do this in your bathrooms where you have faucets and perhaps the laundry room or any other place. Maybe it's in a basement where you have a finished basement that some of the plumbing is within cabinets as well. So we ventured over to the living room or where our thermostat sits. And that's because you should turn up the heat in your house a few degrees. I'm not saying like 10 or 15 degrees, but two, three, four, depending upon what it's typically sat out in the winter. And it's logical, but guess what? The hotter it is in your house, the lesser chance of something freezing. I know it's a little bit painful. You have to pay a little bit extra money to do something like this, but paying a few extra dollars a month is way, way better than dealing with a burst pipe. All right, we're on our third tip and that is to keep your doors open throughout your house so no room gets kind of isolated and doesn't get the heat that it needs, especially bathrooms and especially in the basement. Right behind me is a bathroom that we have in the basement. Basements notoriously get cold. Rooms in the basement, especially those tucked away in the corner, notoriously get cold. If you have a bathroom hidden in your basement, make sure you keep the doors open. But again, keep the doors open throughout all your house so the airflow and the heat gets around in all of those rooms. And in the laundry room, it's not a bad idea if you can to do a couple loads in the washing machine. That way, especially if your laundry room is located on an exterior wall, you keep that water moving through those pipes and through the hoses that come out of the wall and into your washing machine. All right, we are up in a bathroom for the next few tips. And as you can see here, we have our faucet dripping. That's important because this faucet sits on an external wall. Any faucet that you have that sits on an external wall, you should make sure is slightly dripping during a cold spell. And what that does, it ensures the water is moving within those pipes leading to that faucet, which slows down and even can prevent those pipes from freezing because we've got that constantly moving water. Shower enclosures. Whether you have a glass door, a different type of door, or even a shower curtain, make sure you draw that curtain or open those shower doors. This way you're providing a more direct way for the heat to hit those plumbing fixtures and the pipes that run in the wall. And yeah, the heat's probably going to get there anyway because it's not like it's its own separate room, the shower, but by opening the door, drawing the curtain, you're allowing that heat more direct access to those plumbing fixtures and the pipes that run in the wall. And let's not forget, hot air rises. So even if you are heating your house well, that hot air might rise even above those shower enclosures and miss kind of some of the stuff that's in the wall. And speaking of showers, if your shower sits on an external wall, turn that shower on every couple hours. Make sure that water is flowing through the shower head. Make sure that water isn't freezing within those pipes. Similarly, if you have a toilet that sits on an external wall, and ours does right here, as you can see, the 
the plumbing line go into the wall right there. Make sure you flush that toilet every couple of hours when you're in single digits. That way it keeps the water flow going, helps prevent any of the freezing that might be happening within your walls. If you have a particularly susceptible room or maybe area in your house that is prone to being cold or the hot air just, it struggles to get there, get yourself a little space heater. And I know, right? You have to be careful with the space heaters and all those disclaimers apply here. Don't leave them unattended. Don't run them when water is happening, all those particular things. But you can heat up a room, especially a small one with a space heater. And especially the ones that exist today, like this one, you can set it at a particular spot, a particular temperature, and it'll heat up to that temperature and then shut off. And then when the room cools a little bit, it'll heat back up. This is a really, really effective way, especially in a small room, to make sure that room is warm enough so that the pipes in the walls, especially on the outside of the house, are prevented from freezing or at least slowing them down from freezing. All right, so what happens if you go to flush the toilet and the water doesn't run or you turn on a faucet and the water doesn't run? That means your pipe is frozen the best way for most homeowners to try to solve this by themselves is to grab a hair dryer and just go to work, turn this on the high setting and point this at the wall. Even better if you know where the pipes are running within the wall. If you have exposed pipes, point it at those exposed pipes and try to warm up that area or those pipes so that the water starts to run again. This is also a great time to call a plumber because plumbers have other tools they might be able to use to help unfreeze your pipes. This is also a great time to use that space heater if you have it. Turn that on, point it at the wall, put it in the room that's experiencing those frozen pipes. Again, that disclaimer, right? If you have a frozen pipe, it might burst. You don't want to mix water with the electricity being used for the space heater, but it could certainly help you heat up a room or a wall. If you do experience a burst pipe in your house, the first thing that you want to do is shut off the water to your house. Typically, most homes have a setup like this. There should be a valve or a lever, as you can see right here. Here's mine, that, that yellow lever. You just wanna move that to the right or twist that to the right. It will shut off all the water to your house and thereby limit the amount of damage the water is doing through your burst pipe. Now, while it's important to do that, it's important to know where this valve or your, where your water shut off exists in your home before you have an incident. You don't wanna be searching for that while water is gushing out of a pipe. So certainly be sure you know where that is ahead of time. That's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Be safe.